Christ today. Do you know who Jesus is? Uh, yeah, that's the word of God. The word tells me he's the son of God, that he died. But do you know him? You see, it's one thing to know him, about him, another thing to know him. And another thing to know him every day. Experiencing him. Experience his love. It's, it's the greatest thing in the world to hear Jesus say, I love you. Amen? It's the greatest thing in the world to hear him say, I love you. You can do it. You can make it. You can overcome this. I'm here. I'm by your side. I'm with you all the way. Hallelujah. What is the devil? What is the flesh compared to Jesus? Amen? Compared to me. I love it when he says that to me. What is that, Stephen? It's nothing. It's nothing. <laughs> I had kind of a unique experience uh, the last couple weeks. I had a little something that was growing here on the side of my neck. And every time my shirt would brush over it, it, just, it was very sensitive. It would put me in pain. And it was, it was so, I'll say it's funny, but, you know, right away the devil popped in the six-letter word. The six-letter word. What is that six-letter word? Cancer. Cancer. And I stopped. And I waited. In a minute. No fear. And I began to laugh at the devil. Because he was trying to exalt one six-letter word over Jesus. He was trying to exalt or put one six-letter word above Jesus. And I laughed at him. I said, devil, you think I'm naive or something? You think that I'm going to allow you to exalt a six-letter word above Jesus? You're going to put, plant that six-letter word in my mind trying to create fear? Sorry. Jesus is there already. I have the mind of Christ. And so I laughed at the devil because I thought, here he is. It's just a six-letter word, and he's trying to exalt it above the name of Jesus. He's trying to exalt it above my relationship with Jesus. Knowing that Jesus has taken all my diseases and bear all my sicknesses. That it was all done at Calvary. Amen? That he already took it away. Hallelujah. But you see, that's the, what the devil does. He tries to plan a word to get you to react. And when you don't have the fear in your heart, he gets no reaction. What's he get? He gets laughter. He gets joy. He gets happiness. Why? Because my relationship with Jesus is greater than a six-letter word. I said, you're going to have to try something better than that, devil. One six-letter word. That's all it is. You've got to realize that that's just a word. That word means nothing if we wouldn't have had doctors that created that word or put a symptom with that word, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if we were back in the caveman days, they didn't know what that six-letter word was. Or if we were, what, I don't know, 40, 50, 60 years ago, I don't know how many years that that word has been around. But it wasn't here. What, what word or what name has been here much longer than that six-letter word? <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> well, I'm trying to go by the name of Jesus. Amen? Anyways, I laughed at the devil. And I think it was a day or so later, I woke up and brushed my neck and it fell off and it was gone. It was perfectly fine. But you see, if I would have allowed him, if I would have had fear in my heart, he could have planted that six-letter word in my heart and grew it with fear. But because there was no fear there, the six-letter word didn't take root. Amen. The thought of that six-letter word, the word cancer, did not take root in my heart because Jesus was already there. You see, the more and more that you can fill your heart with Jesus, fill your mind with Jesus, fill your life with Jesus, the devil can't plant anything in there. He can try, but you'll just laugh at him because you realize it's just a six-letter word. What else does he try on you? I mean, he tries to plant all kinds of thoughts, doesn't he? But you see, really, when you come back down to it, you look at the book of James, James tells us, the, uh, the Spirit of God through, through the book of James has told us that God does not try or tempt any of us. He's not the tempter. He's not the trier. Even in Job's case, it wasn't God that did the tempting, the trying, or the testing of Job. All he said is, okay, devil, I'll pull down the hedge. Have at him. God 
doesn't do that. God doesn't test, test or try you. It's the devil. God may permit it, but it's still the devil is the agent. Don't confuse that, folks. Don't confuse that. A lot of people think, well, I'm not going to get close to God. He's going to test me and try me. Well, it's going to happen one way or the other, folks. Get close to him because you're overcome. What is it that the devil can plant? If you got fear in your life, well, he can plant a six-letter word, and that fear just rises up and, and begins to incubate that six-letter word and, and begins to work in your life to bring it about. <coughs> what is it? What is it in life? Is it fear? Is it lack of money? Is it, oh, gee, I'm going to go broke. <laughs> I'm going to lose the house. I mean, you know, there's all kinds of people out there in foreclosure, and maybe you're listening you know, through the Internet today, but God is greater than foreclosure, folks. God is greater than bankruptcy. He is there. He has said that if you cast all your care upon Him, He will care from you. He will care for you. Amen? It doesn't mean that we have, don't have to have stewardship, good stewardship or whatnot, but he can definitely get you out of some nasty circumstances. Amen. Some that look impossible, God can be there and save the day. Amen. Amen. That's what it's all about. So what is he? Is he chasing you or are you chasing him? You see, so what am I saying? I'm saying that God is not the test. He's not the one who tests or tempts or tries you. He merely allows it, pulls the hedge down and says, go ahead. This is my son. I've got confidence in Melanie. I've got confidence in her today. She's going to handle it. I know she's trusting in me, and I know she'll trust in me through it all. Amen? But you see, what is in us?